Good day and welcome to this presentation. Today we will be looking at change in accounting policies. Now there are two instances when a company needs to change its accounting policy. This change could be required by a standard. For example, the initial adoption of a standard or new standard or even an interpretation. Now when this occurs, the change must be accounted for based on the transitional provisions as set out in the standard. But when there are no transitional provisions, the change must be accounted for retrospectively. Now, what does ret retrospectively mean? It means that it's as if the company has always applied the new accounting policy. So the entity will need to go into prior years and make adjustments to the accounting figures. Now to explain this a little bit better, here we have a timeline. On our timeline, we have prior years, current year and future periods. So retrospectively means we need to adjust for the current and the prior year going forward. Another situation that could lead to a company changing its accounting policy is a voluntary change. This is, for example, when a company is given a choice between two options and then decides to change their policy. Now, the standard does allow for a change in accounting policy, but only when this change will result in reliable and more relevant presentation of the financial statements. Now, when the change in accounting policy is a voluntary change, it must be accounted for retrospectively. So again, this means that the company needs to go into its prior year figures and account for this change as if it has always been like that. But what if a company has lost some of their documentation? Or what if it is impractical, impracticable to determine, then the change must be accounted for prospectively. Now, prospectively means that it would be from the current year going forward. So that means that the change has only taken place in the current year and it's going to be accounted for from the current year going forward. So let's have a look at an example. Here we have PC Limited, who is a company that buys and sells computer equipment. The company has a 30 June year end and all inventory was accounted for on the weighted average method. And on 30 June 2020, the directors decided to change their accounting policy with regards to the valuation of inventory to the first in first out method. And they did this to improve the matching of revenue and expenses. Now, the value of the inventory based on the two methods was as follows. At 30 June, we have our weighted average, which for the 2018 year was 61,000, 2019 year 53,000, and 2020 year was 49,000 Rand. When it comes to our FIFO method, in 2018, we had 63,000 Rand, 2019, 57, and 57,000, and in 2020, we had 52,500. Now, all these amounts are material, and SARS will not reopen any of the previous year's tax assessments. The new accounting policy will, however, be accepted for tax purposes. The SA normal tax rate is 28% and this has remained unchanged for the period. Now the required states that we need to calculate the adjustments that must be made to retained earnings, inventory and profit or loss for the year ending 30 June 2020. So based on the information we know, we know that we have a change in accounting policy. How do we know that? The directors are changing the way the valuation methods of the inventory of the inventory from the weighted average method to FIFO. 
We also know that this is a voluntary change as the directors have the option to use weighted average or FIFO and they decided to change. And therefore we know that we must apply this change retrospectively. So that means as if the stock has always been accounted for on the FIFO method. Now before we start with the calculation, let's have a look at what the effect of an increase in the closing inventory has on our profits. It is important that you understand this as when it comes to the next step, it will be based on this principle. So let's assume we have a company who has revenue amounting to 160,000 and the opening inventory is 50,000 Rand and the company purchased 180,000 rands worth of inventory. At year end, the stock on hand amounted to 90,000 rand. This is the closing inventory. So based on this, the cost of sales for the year amounts to 140,000. And how do we calculate this? It is the opening stock of 50,000 rand plus the purchases of 180,000 rand less our closing stock of 90,000 Rand. And this will give us a gross profit of 20,000 Rand. Now let's keep all the amounts the same, but we're going to change the closing inventory as we are going to increase it with 20,000 Rand. So we're going to now make it 110,000 Rand. So as you can see here, the cost of sales have now been reduced to 120,000. They were 140, but now it's 120,000. And the value of our stock at year end is higher because it was 90,000. Now it's 110,000. This higher value of stock has resulted in an increase in our gross profit because our gross profit is now 40,000 Rand. And therefore, due to the increase in the value of the stock still on hand, the profit has gone up as the closing inventory is deducted from the cost of sales, as this is stock still on hand and will only be sold in the following year. So now we can so now we can start our calculations to the solution and when we start with the solution it's important to keep in mind what we are trying to achieve. Now in this scenario the directors have changed their valuation method of inventory from the weighted average method to the FIFO method. So the starting point is going to be what is the difference between these two methods. Now, as we need to apply this change retrospectively, we need to go back to prior years to make these relevant changes. And in this case, the earliest date that we can go back to is 2018. So we're going to start with a balance of the inventory as per our FIFO model. So this is a new policy. So in our 2018 year, the inventory balance was 63,000 Rand. But what we currently have in the accounting records based on the weighted average model or method is 61,000 Rand. So as we can see by this changing of our accounting policy, there is an increase of inventory of 2,000 Rand. Now, as we've said before, this increase in inventory means that the closing balance of our cost of sales increases. And because that increases, we're going to have an increase in our profit before tax. But in addition to this, because there's an increase in our profit before tax, we're going to have an increase in tax as well. And the tax that we're going to calculate on this 2000 Rand is going to be at 28%, which means it's going to be 560 Rand. Now the increase in our profit after tax due to this increase in our closing inventory will be 1440 Rand. If we have a look at our 2019 financial year, according to the FIFO method, our inventory balance is going to be 57,000, but currently what's 
in the accounting records because currently the company is on the weighted average method and currently it is 53,000 rand. So there needs to be a 4,000 rand adjustment to bring the value of the inventory up to 57,000. So this results in an increase in our profit before tax of 4,000 rand and an increase in tax of 1,120, which results in an increase in profit after tax of 2,880. Now for the 20 year, we repeat these same steps again. So for FIFO, on the FIFO method, our inventory will be 52,500. The weighted average will be 49,000. So there is an increase of 3,500 Rand. The tax will be 980 Rand and that results in a profit after tax of 2520. So now that we have the effect of the change in the inventory valuation method of each of these years, we still have to look at the movement that occurs between these years. Because if we have a look at this, our 2018, 2019 and 2020 columns, these are the amounts that will affect our statement of financial position because these are year end balances. But now if we want to look at what is the effect on our statement of profit or loss, we need to look at the movement between our years. So if we want to have, if we want to see what is the effect on our statement of profit or loss for our 2019 year, we need to look at the movement between 2018 and 2019. So if we do that, we'll see that the increase in profit before tax due to the increase in closing inventory will be 2,000 Rand, which is the 4,000 Rand of 2019 minus the 2,000 Rand of 2018, which gives us a movement of 2,000 Rand. And as you can see, 4,000 Rand is going up from 2018, which means we have an increase in our inventory from 2018 to 2019. So our 2000 Rand difference must be positive because it's increasing, okay? The increase in tax is going to be 560,000. Again, it's a difference between the two years. And then we have the increase in profit after tax, which will be 1,440. Now we repeat this step again for our 2019 and 2020 movements. And there we'll see now in 2019, our inventory balance or our increase in profit before tax was 4,000 Rand. But in 2020, it was 3,500. So it's gone down. So now we need to have our 500 Rand in brackets. And then we will have tax on this amount being 140 Rand and the net decrease or the decrease in our profit after tax will be 360 Rand. Now, very important, don't forget your signs. As you can see here, our profit before tax figures are, are in positive, except for the, the movement between 2019 and 2020. But in each line item, the tax is the opposite sign. So just remember to take note of your signs when doing this. Now, if we have a look at our calculation and we actually break it down into which line items in, this, in the financial statements they will affect, then we'll have something pretty much like this. We have our 2018 column, 2019 column, and 2020 column. Now, our 2019 column is our prior years. So that it are, those will be our comparative figures. 2020 is our current year. So that is what also has to be disclosed in the financial statements. 2018 is a period before. But we also need to take into account those adjustments. So let's have a look how we're going to do that. If we look at our table, 
we have an increase in inventory for 2018 our increase in inventory was 2000 rand remember it's a 63000 minus 61000 so the increase in inventory was 2000 in 2019 it was 4000 and 2020 it was 3500 so as you can see we are looking at the figures of our 2018 2019 and 2020 columns and we can purely just read off those amounts from their calculation and now group them according to which line items they affect because now our increase in deferred tax is going to be for 2018 560 rand 2019 1120 rand and 2020 it's going to be 980 rand the increase in equity is going to be for 2018 1440 rand 2019 2880 rand and 2020 will be 2520 rand now very important why did we say increasing deferred tax we said that because SARS will not open the prior year assessments but they do accept the change from the current year so that means that if we have a look at our 2018 column the inventory carrying amount according to accounting is going to now be 63,000 rand but the tax base for that inventory is going to stay 61,000 rand because SARS is not going to open that year's tax assessment so that will result in a deferred tax because the carrying amount is not equal to the tax base. So for our 2018 financial year, there is going to be a deferred tax. Now, as you can see, the increase in inventory, increase in deferred tax and the increase in equity are all items that affect our statement of financial position. But now we need to go have a look at what affects our statement of profit or loss. Now the 2018 year, there's going to be no adjustments to our statement of profit or loss because 2018 is not a comparative year. So all those adjustments are going to ma be made to the statement of financial position. So we are going to account for this inventory, this increase in inventory, by increasing our inventory with 2,000 Rand, increasing our deferred tax with 560 Rand, and the profit or loss portion is going to go directly to equity. So we're going to adjust the opening balance of equity with 1,440 Rand. So for the 2019 and 2020 years, to make the adjustments, we're going to have a decrease in cost of sales. For 2019, the decrease is going to be 2,000 Rand and in 2020, it's actually going to increase. So we need to have it in brackets of 500 Rand. Now, why do we say a decrease in cost of sales? Well, an increase in your closing balance of inventory will result in a decrease in your cost of sales because our cost of sales is made up of the opening balance plus purchases less our closing inventory so the higher the closing inventory the lower our cost of sales the increase that we're going to have in tax expense for 2019 will be 560 rand and in 2020 it will be 140 rand and our very last item is the increase in profit which for 2019 will be 1,440 and 2020 will be 360 Rand. So now that we know how the calculations work, the next step is going to be knowing how to disclose this in the financial statements. But that we're going to get to in the next presentation.